Hello, kids. Nick DiPaolo podcast is on tonight. <laughs> it's really today. How's it going? Long time no speak. Yes, it's Monday again. Long day. I hate these days. Woke up about 5 a.m. You know, the I've documented my sleep problems. Went back to sleep to about 8.30. Was up by 9. I don't have to be to work till 10.30 night at the comedy show. <laughs> That's a long day. <clears throat> Excuse me. But it uh, gives me plenty of time to talk to you folks. God, me and the wife had a good laugh yesterday. I go to take the trash out. She's sitting on the front steps, like a, like a couple of hillbillies, watching me take the trash down to the driveway. And uh, my trash cans are in a, you know, a screened-in box type of uh, thing that the guy who lived here before us built. Uh, you know, for parents' purposes. And uh, anyways, I lift that. It's very heavy to lift that. And then I lift the top off the, the lid of the trash can. A squirrel jumps. Literally, his ass was the eighth of an inch from my nose. Leaps out of the trash ha- about 20 feet to up into a tree. I, I, I'd i say I jumped about 11 inches. Didn't hear it. Wasn't moving when I lifted the lid. You know how when you corner a rat, they say they'll jump right for your throat? Same same principle here, but he missed. <laughs> Holy shit. Man. Fucking wife was belly laughing. If that was her, she would have died. I mean, if she sees a spider or a mouse in the house, she, she literally just, you know, has a panic attack and there's no consoling her. It happened so quick. It didn't even, it, it, the thing flew by me. I didn't know what it was. I didn't know they they could spring like that. Like your average NBA power forward. Unbelievable. From the top of the trash can to a tree that had to be 10, 15 feet. Unbelievable. Flying rat. Missed my face by inches. So now, uh, you know, I went down there this morning. I have to rattle all these things. It's like coming home to an empty house. You're like, hello, is anybody in my house? Making, you know, you start slamming shit around to let the criminal know you're home. I got to do that with trash now. I, I knock on top of the uh, trash can. <laughs> nothing, I, nothing a nice uh, piece of meat with bleach on it won't help. Maybe some nuts. Put some walnuts out there with, with some bleach. Like the guy that owned the uh, comedy club. Remember I told you his son said, Dad, there's a bird's nest up in the awning. And he goes, get the bleach. It's an old Italian remedy. But uh, holy shit, that scared the hell out of me. I'm sure you've had that happen. Anyways, what's going on, kids? Uh, real quickly, uh, where am I going to be? Uncle Vinny's Point Pleasant this Saturday night. One of my favorite gigs. You actually bring your own booze, I told you. I always bust their balls. Um, <laughs> it's uh, it's a good gig, though. Uncle Vinny's uh, this Saturday night, the 27th, down in Point Pleasant, New Jersey. And um, July 18th. Ridgefield Playhouse, Ridgefield, Connecticut. Probably my favorite venue. I'm not kidding you. It's just my demographic. Bunch of cranky white people. Um, yeah, so come out to see. It's a beautiful theater. And uh, it was pretty close to full last time. And I think we'll fill it this time. I think we all had a good time. And uh, another senseless killing. Was in and out of the charts on iTunes, which is good. It's still alive and, and kicking. And uh, I'm going out, uh, I'm going to do my uh, annual trip out for the, uh, you know, the podcast tour out in L.A. That's where the heavy hitters are. Uh, in July, I'm going to go out there and uh, hit up Joe, uh, let me see, hopefully Fitzsimmons and Bill Burr on the 20th. These are all tentative, but they look pretty much solid. Joe Rogan on the 21st. Mark Marin, talk about a heavy hitter, huh? Well, you know, I have Joe uh, Matarese in here. I have Joe List. Uh, Marin has uh, Barack Obama this week. <laughs> Today, as a matter of fact. <laughs> Good for Marin. Let me tell you something about Marin. Never had a real problem with him. Well, he called me irrelevant at the uh, comedy festival, and I won't let that go. But I'm just doing what he does, uh, obsessing on things and being insecure about shit you really shouldn't be insecure about. But uh, me and him never really had a problem. He, you know, he was a, he's a lib and he knew, uh, he always looked at me as some type of Nazi. Uh, but we always never got into it that heavily. And I laughed at his neuroses. 
And um, he laughed at my, you know, short temper. And uh, we were both very negative people. They used to joke the Comedy Cellar when we came in together that, you know, like a giant rain cloud would form over that comedian's table. Just so much negative energy between him and me. He seems a little better uh, than he was. But anyways, the point is he had the president of the United States in his friggin' garage. And uh, I give Obama props for that. Again, I hate both their politics, but uh, kudos to Marin for uh, landing that. It's unbelievable. And, it, and people are going, well, isn't that beneath the presidency? No, yeah, uh, no. When you're the president, you want to get your message out. And Marin's, what, his thing's been downloaded, his show, over 100 million times since he started. Uh, WTF, what the fuck? And uh, so what does the president give a shit? And he knows Marin's, Marin's a lib, and uh, I think it's kind of funny. It's amazing. In his garage. And I love the fact that Marin didn't like put on a suit jacket or anything, because that's not him. That's not what you do. That's your beauty of being a comic. You know? So, uh, holy Christ. I bet you he's thrilled about my trip out there. After <laughs> I'm just, I got my fingers crossed that he doesn't cross me off the list. I actually sent him a text. I said, now nah, you can call me irrelevant. I mean, Jesus Christ, you're interviewing the president. You can say whatever you want to me at this point. But you'll still get the truth here, folks. Not a bunch of liberal slant that horse shit. But the big news. Uh, well, let's let's start. Let's get the the heavy shit out of the way. I didn't feel like doing a heavy show today, but I can't help it. I can't fucking help it. That's the country we live in right now. It's so divided. And, uh, you know, obviously the South Carolina story, psycho Dylan Roof, hillbilly drug addict fuck. And that's what he was. Make no mistake about it. I don't want to hear how, oh, he's, it's just a symptom of a society uh, as a whole that embraces race racism and blah 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 the same assholes jumped in as they do every time and try to put a twist on this okay guys a piece of shit we can all agree on that okay and what a coward to go into a church peace you know just god loving good people and this asshole just uh you know just a coward and you know what don't give him the death penalty again i'm against the death penalty i want to see him raped in his cell for the next, uh, he's like what, in his 20s? For the next 50 years or so, by people that look just like the people he hated. I'd say that's an eye for an eye. That's justice for this friggin' hillbilly. But, uh, I mean, it's so obvious. And, uh, you know, anytime a story happens the other way, where, where a black person is the killer, it's always an isolated incident. But if we say that, no, 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 it's it's part of a... A systemic uh, racism in this country and blah, 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 which is, I think, total horseshit. And you could see by the people of all races gathering at that church. And I love how about the fact that the relatives of these victims forgave that piece of shit? They're better people than I am. Apparently, they don't have any Italian blood in them because it would be, be about revenge for me and pretty much anybody else. Those are Christians, man. That's how I know I'm not a real Christian and I'm not religious and I... You know, I just don't have any of that in me. But, uh, oh, he's going to, he's going to, I mean, they're going to rip his little white ass up. And uh, I can't think of a better justice. Just a hillbilly fuck. But, um, but then the usual suspects. Where do you, where do you want to start? Uh, we'll, we'll go back to the, uh, we'll get back to Marin and it all ties in because it's all, all race related and, and, uh, but um, every time something like this happens, and it's not that often, okay? It's not that often. I'm talking about a mass slang that involves race. But um, the usual suspects come out. Um, let's start with a, a girl that was on the show last week that we love so much. The uh, the portly pantsuit. You know who I'm talking about. And she's still... They still say she's going to be the nominee. The Democratic nominee. Hillary Clinton, I'm talking about, obviously. Of course, uh... She had her take on this, uh, whole, uh, Carolina story. 
I'm going to play it off my phone because I couldn't. Uh, she has such a big yap. You pull anything off YouTube, it's over, you know, 20 minutes. You can't really convert it, at least the way I do it. And uh, she can't shut, shut her yap. She was speaking this weekend. And it's just hilarious. The emperor has no clothes. Yeah, well, the queen has no pantsuit. She's just talking about race. And I'll, I'll point out the hypocrisy and the contradiction. She's just a walking contradiction. It's fucking, here's her take on it. If I can get the fucker going. Hold on a second. Be patient, kids. <laughs> it's also the cruel joke that goes unchallenged. It's the offhand comment about not wanting those people in the neighborhood. Let's be honest. For a lot of well-meaning, open-minded white people, the sight of a young black man in a hoodie still evokes a twinge of fear. <laughs> this coming from a woman who lives five miles from me, by the way, and uh, lives in a town that's literally has one, I think I look it up, 1.89% black population. She's talking about, oh, we don't want them, people who still say we don't want them in our neighborhood, and that's the neighborhood she lives in, okay? I bought my house because I found it on the internet. I had no idea about the demographics. I loved the fucking house. It was in the woods. Wanted to get out of the city, for those of you who want to call me a hypocrite, okay? I remember uh, Patrice, the late, great Patrice, pointing out, no, it was actually Geraldo. Geraldo said on... Uh, on one of the uh, Tough Crowd episodes about, yeah, DePaulo bought a house up in uh, Westchester so he doesn't have to see any black people during the day or some shit like that, which was not the case, of course. I just I wasn't going to move to New Jersey and deal with tunnels and bridges and wasn't going to move to Long Island. Yeah, good luck with that commute. <clears throat> Excuse me, I still have AIDS of the chest. You can hear it. And uh, so, you know, I ended up in the woods up here. But uh, not far from Mrs. Clinton, but um, she's out there calling everybody else a bigot. Now we have to open our minds with the fucking shamelessness on this. Oh, Jesus H. She makes me crazy. And as far as black kids wearing hoodies. Yeah, I'm still going to cross the street if it's uh, one in the morning. And three of them are coming down the sidewalk. Yeah, I am. You're telling me to go against my natural instincts. And you know who else crosses the street? Black people. Jesse Jackson said as much, remember? When he's talking about walking around D.C. and he hears a pack of young people behind him and he looks behind him, he's relieved to f find out it's not uh, that it's a pack of white kids. Do you remember that statement, Hillary? Unbelievable. The pompous. She lives in the, one of the whitest goddamn town around here. Ugh. What's this? I'm getting an email from my, uh, anyways, uh, just a friggin' hypocrite. I, I can't believe she's still in the running. You guys, I'm hoping that Bernie Sanders, can imagine we have a socialist and a <laughs> self-proclaimed socialist and getting traction. That's where we are. You can say what you want about Obama, man. He fundamentally changed it. All right. I just hope up for a real right winger. There's nobody in the <laughs> nobody in the race right wing enough for me to balance off this big time move to the left. I don't care what you say, but that's Hillary's take on it. Ugh. Um, then of course, Bill Maher. Just when I was starting to see some, he was starting to make some sense. You know, when he brought up uh, how his audience isn't all liberals anymore. They used to draw from a liberal pool, and he started to get a more mixed audience. And he says it's way better now, and. Uh, Remember, he called out liberals for not calling out uh, radical uh, Muslims, and uh, he was starting to sh show a little bit of light, and then uh, he, he fell back into his old ways again, blaming uh, the shooting in South Carolina on a conservative media, which makes me laugh, just the term conservative media, that's hilarious to me. Yeah, we have talk radio and Fox News, and you have 85,000 other outlets, but here's what Bill had to say. Very predictable about the South Carolina thing, as far as who he blames. We can never know why someone snaps, but I bet you I know where he got his news. Yeah. <laughs> Turn that applause sign off for those lemmings. That's right, stupids. Keep applauding. I looked at, because we're coming on this show, referring I looked at to your Fox website office. the last week. It was a lot of stories about black people. 
a lot of stories. Same with Matt Drudge. I mean, I think they present yeah. a really twisted view. I'm not surprised this guy thought they're taking over the country. Obviously, he's a warped mind. That goes into it. But I don't think it was video That goes games. into it. That is it. Yeah, it's Matt Drudge and Fox News. That's that's the problem. That that's who has the twisted reality when it comes to the uh, when it comes to the issue of race. It's not it's not outlets like NBC who during the uh, Trayvon Martin thing. Remember, they actually edited George Zimmerman's nine one one call to make him sound like a racist. They had to apologize. Who has a twisted view uh, of the Duke lacrosse case? Remember that one when the white privileged kid supposedly allegedly raped a, a black girl at a fraternity house who turned out to be all horse shit? Who was, who was trumpeting that shit? Was it Fox News? Was it uh, Matt Drudge? Or was it MSNBC and Al Sharpton? I can't fucking believe. Come on, Bill. You got to be a little fair. Are you shitting me? Are you kidding me? Yeah, it's tw- he's a 20, 20-something-year-old kid, uh, pillhead. I'm sure he's, he's, wa- he's listening to Rush Limbaugh at noontime, and, and he's uh, watching Hannity. Most, most kids at their age get their news from where? Their Comedy Central, if I'm not mistaken. What a crock of shit. They do this all the time, though. Remember Gabby Giffords? Remember the uh, f- female senator who got shot in Arizona? Remember? What's the first thing they did? They went after Sarah Palin. Bill Maher, all of them did. Pointed the fingers at Sarah Palin because she had a campaign, uh, a map of the United States with targets that she wanted to hit, and she had bullseyes on the targets. And they said that's what contributed to the gun. Bu- when it turns out that asshole had no p- political affiliations at all. He was even a little, I think he was even left-leaning, as a matter of fact. And then the, uh, the Aurora shooter at the movie theater, that Holmes guy, James Holmes, who was like apolitical but the first thing they did was uh, bl- blame the gun nuts on the right and blah 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 and, and then you have the <laughs> nerve to say it's uh you know it's fox news and matt drudge who puts up he- headlines from websites from all over the world jesus christ wake up how can you fucking fall for this shit uh same thing with, uh, you know what, McVeigh. They did it with McVeigh. They kept calling him a, a wacko right-wing Christian. He was another one. That was, he was a religious. He was anti-government. Had nothing to do, nothing to do with religion. Never mentioned it or anything. You wouldn't know that from the media. I mean, there's a, there's a thousand other examples. I mean, you, libs don't even argue that the media is liberal anymore. So how can you fucking point your finger at Fox News? They're even too liberal when it comes to the issue of fucking race. It's just, uh, it's, it's, it's just so predictable. You see it coming, don't you? And uh, how about the Ferguson, MSNBC, during the, the Ferguson? You know, they were right out there trumpeting that Mike Brown had his hands up, which was a total friggin' lie we found out. Who's, who, was, who was pushing that narrative? Was it Fox News? No. It was MSNBC, New York Times. All the, all the usual suspects. So I would argue just the opposite. It's the mainstream media, lib mainstream media, that creates these nuts. Ugh. <laughs> I can't believe Hillary. I couldn't believe that one, though. That one. Does she not know? She probably doesn't even, she's probably not even home enough to realize how white her town is. But you know what? You know what this story does do out of South Carolina? It 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 clarifies what a racist is because the the definition of a racist, the scope of the definition has become so wide over the years. Okay, anything from just disagreeing with Obama on policy makes you a racist. You know what I mean? This is a racist. Got to remind people what a real racist is. This guy is this Dylan fucking hillbilly roof. How about he, he's so stupid, he wanted to kill himself and didn't even leave enough bullets for himself. That would involve counting, I guess. That's what one of the survivors said. He put the gun to his head and it clicked. Okay? That's so dumb and what a hillbilly. But to, to you know, to point the fingers and, and Obama and, and Hillary, they were right out there. What, what, fucking less than 24 hours after it happened. 
politicizing it, bringing up the gun control, like any type of laws. How many times do you have to go over this? The the D.C., Chicago, the, the cities with the most the strict gun law, and I'm not a gun nut, but they, they have the worst amount of gun violence. You're not going to stop an idiot like this. No, no laws are going to stop an idiot like this. They're always going to be able to get guns, but they do it. They politicize it because it's their religion. Oh, anyways, what the hell? That kid's going to rot. Or they're going to maybe get the day. Either way, who cares? I mean, death penalty, fine. But I'd rather have him tortured by the people, very people that he hates. He's such an idiot, too. He goes, oh, black people are violent and uh, ignorant. You think he's projecting it all? Christ. But, uh, Yeah. Just like to go a month without one of these stories, wouldn't you? It doesn't seem like it. I mean, and this will stay in the news for a long time because the victims were black. You know, um, when the white kid jogging in Oklahoma, Murray, he would get shot by a black kid in the back. He was just jogging. Him and then another friend of his was bored, so they shot this kid dead. That was in the story. That was in the news for what, two days, maybe, on page eight. And then the um, the World War II veteran, 88 years old, up in uh, around the Seattle area, remember? A couple of young black kids beat him to death. That, uh, But that wasn't racism, you know? I don't know what you'd call that. Well, that was an economic crime. How about those cases when, when, when a black kid mugs somebody? Uh, and this happens a lot. Even after they have the money, they shoot the victim. Even after they take the, the guy's wallet or whatever. Wouldn't that be hate? It's all hate. Can't have this hate crime thing. That's all nonsense, too. It's all hate when you kill somebody. And the people that are always, uh, you know, whining that they want a colorblind society, they're the ones who, who create these things like hate crimes. That came up in the uh, Clinton administration, all that uh, legislation. It's all hate. <laughs> I think it's safe to assume when you take somebody else's life, you hate them. I think it's the ultimate form of hate, isn't it? Um, anyway, Mark Marin, uh, yeah, our buddy Marin. Like I said, I'm going out there in July. <laughs> Hopefully, <laughs> I'll stay on his list. But uh, he had Obama into his garage. How cool is that, though? I mean, that is crazy. I was reading a little bit. I haven't listened to the podcast yet, which I'm going to. I just listened to the beginning of it. He was talking... And Obama hadn't arrived yet, but there was like Secret Service guys kept looking in the window in uh, apparently in Mark's uh, uh, garage window so to see who he was talking to. They told him he had to clean up his garage and sit so the president wouldn't trip over stuff. <coughs> Excuse me. Damn. Can you get pneumonia when you're 53? <laughs> um, yeah. So can you imagine? I'd be shitting bricks. I'd be shitting bricks. But uh, that's how popular that show is. And I was looking at the list of people Marin's had on since he started. So he shouldn't be that nervous. I mean, it's all heavy hitters, man. Whether it's Mel Brooks or uh, whoever. He said, you know, a lot of serious people. But that is so cool. So the big news is during the podcast, obviously, because of the South Carolina incident, um, obviously that has to come up in the discussion. And uh, Obama uh, used a certain word that apparently only a certain part of the the certain segment of the population is allowed to, which I always scoff at and laugh at. If it's a word in the English language, we're all allowed to use it. Might be more risk involved when certain other people use it, but the the fact that some people believe that that they have ownership of it, and we've been through all this whole shit. But anyways, here's President Obama talking to uh, Mark Marin. And surprising people by dropping this. The legacy of slavery, Jim Crow, discrimination in almost every institution of our lives, you know, that casts a long shadow. And that's still part of our DNA. That's that's passed on. First of all, I take umbrage with that. It's part of our DNA. You paint it as all as we're racist. It's in our blood. Just because we were born here, that's that anybody, you know, you can take umbrage with that. But uh, anyways, uh, it, we're not cured of it. 
Racism. Racism. We are not cured of. It's silly, Mr. President. I know you're a smart guy to think we're going to be cured of it. That's never going to go away. Do you understand? It's in. I guess it's in everybody's DNA. You don't have to be an American all over the world. It's just a natural instinct. If if me crossing the street, if I see a bunch five young black kids, and it's two in the morning, and I'm in the village in New York, and I cross the street, just that's considered racism. It's always going to be there. Those are those are natural instincts of preservation. Preservation. It's a dangerous situation. It's a dangerous situation, Christopher. You see what I'm saying, though? So that's always going to be there. Um, you know, even if you look in a cafeteria at a high school, a very diverse high school like in Brooklyn, you'll see all the black kids sitting there. You'll see a bunch of Asian kids sitting together. Is that racist? If that's racism, it's always going to be there. To think you're going to wipe that type of uh, thinking out, which is this human behavior, natural human behavior, you're, you're a little bit silly. I never hear, I, again, everybody, when we discuss racism, it's always, it's like a monolithic subject. It's always assumed that it's white racism we're talking about. That, that notion that you can't be racist if you're a minority, I get, it's actually taken hold. It's the silliest thing I've ever heard. They never talk about black racism, ever, or even, you know, Japanese racism, or how about the Asians that run bodegas that follow young black kids around, they come into shop because they're afraid they're going to shoplift. Let's let's break it down since uh, you guys are so hung up on color. You know, let's talk about Asian racism. It's not just white racism. See, it's in all of us is the point. You're not going to ever eradicate it. It's silly to think so. Let's face it, folks. This country is an experiment that's not working. <laughs> my people sort of stay. My my dad's parents should have stayed in Italy and uh, Collins should have stayed and his grandparents should have stayed in Ireland and uh, Patrice's should have stayed in Africa. Well, they didn't have a choice. They were dragged over here. That's not fair. But uh, clearly. Uh, and, and, and it's not just a matter of uh, it not being polite to say nigger in public. That's what? not the measure of whether racism still exists or not. I'm black, y'all, and I'm black, y'all, and I'm blacker than black, and I'm black, y'all, and I'm black, y'all. No, you're not. You're half black. And I'm blacker than black, and I'm black, y'all. I'm black, blacker than black, black. I'm blacker than black, yo, because I'm black, and I'm black. Yo, I'm black, and I'm black, y'all, and I'm blacker than black, and I'm black, y'all. No, it's no big deal that he said it. It's on CNN. It's the headline new. Everything has to be put into context. What is, I, I don't even see how that's even controversial. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's black. He gets to say it and he said it. And he didn't say it in a, I think, you know, his explanation on, on you know, it's, it's just silly. That uh, it's so controversial. I, it's the only thing I liked so far. This is my favorite thing that he's done as a president. Actually, that's as close as as to honest as he's come as far as a race discussion and he's doing it in the garage of a comedian i kind of like that you're always talking about you know reaching out to the working class people and the regular people that's what he's doing and uh he gets to drop that it would be now would have been news if george w bush said it. <laughs> <coughs> that would have been uh how funny of that, like uh, George W. was in like, uh, <laughs> let's say, Larry the Cable Guy had a podcast and he was sitting in Larry's tent. <laughs> uh, imagine George W. drops the N-word. Uh, now that would have been uh, controversial, but I don't, I don't understand why this is such a big deal. He is half black. That means he has half a right to say it according to the rules of our society. Um, know what I'm saying? Anyways, I'm looking down at my uh, my stupid, uh, you know, whatever. Excuse me. Excuse me, Mr. Bush. Did you really say that? Dad, are you going to So that's the big news. That he said that. Uh, I can't wait to listen to the whole interview, though. It should be interesting. 
And he got in a bunch of uh, hooey, too, for playing golf while he was up there. I guess he's golfing in California. And I guess that's controversial because the, uh, you know, the state of California is going through the worst drought in the history of the state. It's drier than Barbara Bush's uh, ass and uh, made no sense. Anyways, but uh, he's golfing and, you know, on nice plush greens and you can't be doing that if you're out. You know, talking about uh, conservation of water and whatnot. So he got, you can't, let's be honest, when you're the president, you can't do anything without taking a, a rash of shit. But, um, so, uh, yeah, that's that. And uh, nothing we could do about it. Uh, he was gone. And he's gone. What else do I want to say? It's about it as far as that stuff goes. I just... It's just so disappointing when when Bill Maher. I try to. I, I want to like him, and 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 then he comes out with that. That's he's way smarter than that, isn't he? Sure, he is. Mm. But uh, what the hell else is in the news? Oh, to stay on the lib uh, media, as opposed to the conservative media. Did you see the picture the AP put up? I found this on Breitbart, but it's an actual picture, an AP picture. Of Ted Cruz, obviously probably the most right-wing guy in the, uh, uh, excuse me, on the Republican side as far as possible uh, presidential nominee. And um, he's speaking somewhere. I don't even know where. But there's a poster in the background. And on the poster, there's a giant picture of a handgun. And, of course, the AP guy, the press photographer, Charlie uh, Niebergall, he, he, he frames the picture so the gun is pointing right. It, it's a profile picture from the right of Ted Cruz, and the gun is pointing right at Ted Cruz's forehead. And again, I kind of find it funny, but I can't totally find it funny because if that was a dem, if that was Hillary or, you know, Nancy Pelosi, Michelle Obama, the president, can you imagine? Well, not the president. I don't think anybody would be dumb enough to do that, even the AP. But, uh, but, uh, how do you know, how do you make it news? Because it's Ted Cruz. And uh, can you imagine the shitstorm that would have caused? You know, and, 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 and really, it's the fucking right. It's the conservative media that, that's twisted in their fucking reality. Woo. It's 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 it, again, if, if there wasn't a double standard, I'd be laughing. But uh, it, it's placed there perfectly. And, you know, I want to see if it makes the news tonight anywhere other than. Maybe Fox. <laughs> but this is what you're going to be dealing with in these ele- upcoming elections. Just keep that in mind when you vote, folks. And we're such a media-driven society, and that's why uh, the libs won the culture war. Because, let's face it, that, that, that idiot box influences everybody's behavior. And people that say it doesn't, you, well, you're just lying. Why would Budweiser spend a trillion dollars a year on advertising or any company if it didn't affect your behavior? So, um... And uh, again, you can't deny that there's a uh, left-wing slant to the mainstream media. And uh, it's amazing to me that George W. Bush even won twice. It's all fucking rigged. Who am I kidding? It's not even, I don't even know. Like, another part of me, like I said last week, it's probably 12 guys in a room somewhere deciding all this shit. But uh, that is no doubt that would cause a furor if that was, (laughs) I don't know, Hillary if it was Hillary, I'd, I'd put like a, uh, it would be funny if it wasn't even a handgun, just a, like a big dick on a poster in the background. <laughs> but let's see if that uh, causes a stir. I'm black, y'all. Uh, what the hell else did I want to talk about? Um, how about, oh, they're trying to get rid of, again, again, if you're a lib, you got to give big props to Obama. As far as fundamental, his fundamental change. Oh, yeah, big couple rulings coming down today. One Ob- on Obamacare and whether they can provide uh, federal subsidies uh, to these exchanges. And if they can't, it's really going to pretty much destroy Obamacare or whatever. And the other one is the gay marriage thing, which I don't give two shits about. The Supreme Court's going to rule on that, whether it's going to be a nationwide thing. Which it probably should be. I don't, again, that one doesn't, me, so-called Mr. Right Winger, it doesn't. I don't, I don't even understand why that would be a problem. but uh, 
Well, it could be a problem when you start forcing people like bakeries that don't want to, you know, get involved in a gay wedding. When you start to force them, then you have a problem. But I always thought the individual state should decide that horse shit. But, uh, yeah, the Obamacare, those two big things are supposed to come down today. I think it's Kennedy who's the swing vote on the gay marriage thing. And he has a I think it's Kennedy. I might be wrong there. Uh, I believe so, though. And, and he has a uh, I think has a history of siding um, with gays on, on issues like this. So that one's pretty much done. If I had to bet money. Uh, oh, the uh, <laughs> this one got to crack me up. Uh, they're trying to get uh, Hamilton off the ten dollar bill. Alexander, Alexander Hamilton, who, by the way, if you look at the ten dollar bill, I always used to say this. He kind of the picture of him on there. He looks like uh, kind of a younger Don Imus. And uh, yeah, so uh, they're trying to get him booted again. And another uh, another example of just trying to wipe out the history of the United States and how it was founded and the great minds and the white males that founded the greatest nation on the face of the earth. Well, eventually all that shit's going to be gone. By the time I'd say I get off the planet, which is in about 30 years, if I'm lucky, um, you won't even know there were white fellas here. You won't know the history because they don't teach this shit anymore. But Alexander Hamilton, for those of you who have had a New York City uh, education or anywhere else, for that matter, he founded the uh, Treasury. He was the founder, okay? Um, he fought in the American Revolution, the Battle of uh, Yorktown, I think it was, co-author of the uh, Federalist Papers. <laughs> I mean, the guy was sort of important. <laughs> you know what I mean? A lot of credentials. And uh, they're going to replace him with a chick because that's what's important today. You got to have tits and a clit. That's important. Forget forget the fact there's no woman that uh, alive back then or alive now that has the resume that Alexander Hamilton has. And that's what the money. That's why you get your face put on money because you've done something. Uh, there is nobody that exists like that. That, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, maybe Dolly Madison, and uh, I'll agree to it if she has big tits and a nice ass. But other than that, she better have an ass on her like Kim Kardashian. Uh, but do you see, again, once again, Howard Zinn must have a hard on right now. Just uh, revisionist history. Throw a broad on there. Get him off. And uh, then you get a lot of people saying, well, why, you know, and then there are people pissed about this. There's actually people who follow this stuff, like experts on money and stuff and historical people. But uh, how about Andrew Jackson? He's on the 20 and he was a slave owner and a fucking just a real asshole. <laughs> like one of the worst presidents ever. They should take, but if they're going to, yeah, replace Andrew Jackson, they should put a woman on and instead of Andrew, throw, but throw somebody they, just really like a nobody like uh just put a woman on it like people would have to google just to really like uh mrs kravitz from bewitched i think that's the show she was on the real fucking nosy uh, <laughs> real nosy ugly neighbor just toss her up there and let people have to google it and learn about her just with the horrible resume showbiz resume and just don't give any explanation. Just go with the government. That's who we chose. Shut up. I'm sure it'll be, uh, I'm sure it'll be, uh, oh, they already used the uh, Indian chick. I can't even pronounce her name. They put her on a coin. How about the broad, the, uh, the Indian from the Lando Lakes butter box? The one that I used to jack off to when I was like 10. Remember I told you he used to fold. It's in my special. Another census killing at nickdip.com, by the way. It's one of the bits in there. I do a thing on the evolution of porn. And the uh, Lando Lakes box, the remember the girl, the Indian kneeling down, bare legs. You could, you could fold her knees up, and it would, but they would become her tits. It's an old thing. You can Google that and watch it. It's a guy that does a video on that. But um, maybe throw her on there if you're gonna if you're gonna get you know. Eventually they'll get rid of George Washington hey, again. It's uh, unless somebody puts a halt to this fucking train, this runaway train. But, uh, yeah, if there's a woman out there that lived when he did that had a better resume, uh, okay, then I will think about it. But until then, kiss my white grits. (laughs) Uh, uh, 
Doesn't it anger a little bit that it's so deliberate, though? It's just, uh, it's not going to matter. Country's going to be look like a third world shithole in the next 10 minutes anyways. Why am I even doing this? Um, what the hell else? Yeah, so uh, it's really about credentials, which leads me to my next story. Did you hear about now the military? They're going to start banning combat patches on uniforms. Badges, you know, you see uh, you see soldiers when they're being interviewed on TV and they have all those badges on their chest, you know, stuff. Actual things that signify what they've done. Do you know what I mean? Their accomplishments. Yeah, they're going to start. They've already started, like, pulling those. Yeah. You heard me. That way everybody feels more equal. You know what I mean? Young soldiers who haven't had any battlefield experience yet, uh, they just don't feel as equal. That's what it's all about, right, folks? It's about being equal. Everybody gets a trophy. Now, apparently, we've gone from everybody gets a trophy to nobody gets trophies in the military. Yeah, here's the article. You earn it, you keep it, you wear it. That's how many soldiers value their combat patches and insignia that display who they are and what they've done. But while in the field, the commander of Fort Carson's 1st Striker Brigade combat team uh, wants soldiers' uniforms to be bare to the bone, only showing name, rank, American flag, U.S. Army tape, and the unit's 4th Infantry Division insignia. The purpose is to promote a unified Army culture, Colonel David Hodney Recently, I hope I'm not messing up his name. Then again, if he's such a PC dummy, I don't care. Recently told the Colorado Springs Gazette. Hodney also wants to boost morale by making newcomers feel welcome. While we're all proud of our individual accomplishments when training in the field, we're building a team and do not need to focus or be distracted by our own or others' individual accomplishments. You hear that? It's basically fucking, uh, oh my God. It's it, it, again, it's 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 just a uh, version of uh, everybody gets a trophy or nobody gets a trophy. Yeah, there was a story I didn't even pull it out, but my wife was reading uh, in the Sunday paper. There's high schools around here up where I live or I don't know where they were. There's like seven high schools. They're not going to have a valedict- valedictorian anymore. They're going to have e- multiple ones. Can you fucking believe it? It's you're attacking the very thing. That's all. That's all a based on a hatred of competition and and this obsession with equality and egalitarianism. It's just fucking you, you're cutting the heart out of what made made this country the balls. Can you fucking imagine if you're a soldier and you're so weak minded that you're going to be discouraged that somebody has more badges on the uniform and you don't have any? You you, you shouldn't you, you're not even strong enough to be in the military in the first place. I'd order that code red tonight. You goddamn right I did. <laughs> what was that kid's name? Oh, I can't remember. But uh and why? Cuz he couldn't run fast. Yeah, because you have to run fast in the military. We've already talked about this on this show. You used to have to do like 15 pull-ups. Now it's like 5 since the chicks have gotten involved. And I'll say it again, your army's only as strong as your weakest soldier. And if you're mentally so weak that you, you're you're going to be crushed because somebody has more decorations, holy shit! What the fuck? Of, what is going on? Oh, boy. And you know what? The soldiers are pissed about it, and you'd think they would be. The move has some soldiers riled up. Combat patches aren't worn to say, "Look, I've, I've deployed," or. I love this unit, wrote Tom Simpkins on the Army's uh, Time Facebook page. In an answer to a request for comment, I wear mine as a scar. I wear it for every single person. This is a soldier talking who deployed with me in every minute of rough times we went through. Exactly. Exactly. It seems ridiculous, especially in an infantry or other combat MSOs. Uh, Joseph Cresticelli wrote on Facebook, it lets newer guys such as myself know who to look to for guidance for first person experience as well as demands that as well as demands that extra bit of respect. Exactly. If you're a young guy, you want to know who. uh, Right. You want to know who to go to who's been through the shit. This is incredible to me. And it, but it shouldn't surprise me, because like I told you, 
when uh, the few USO gigs I did when we went over to Japan, you know, all the hot spots, Japan in 2003. Um, I remember doing uh, stuff in Japan uh, because the war was going on in Iraq war or whatever. Uh, even in uh, Afghanistan, we were given a list of shit. Don't make fun of the culture. Uh, ba 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 And uh, I remember doing a couple of bits that were getting like gasps. Like I was on the, like I was at the comedy cellar in front of a, uh, a bunch of NYU students. And I remember Quinn even saying, only DePaulo could, uh, only DePaulo could, uh, you know, make the, uh, make a bunch of Marines fucking gasp or something. And it wasn't even ridiculous stuff because like I said, they told us, uh, not to go too heavy on that. You know, there's a list of shit we couldn't, this is the military guys. This is the fucking military. I mean, they kill people for a living, but I can't poke fun at fucking Muslims or whatever, or, or, or just the Afghan uh, culture or whatever. Can you friggin' imagine? So yeah, let's take the badges off the soldiers and make them all look like fucking Eagle Scouts. And uh, oh my god, where does this shit end? Is it, is it going to spill into pro sports? Uh, you know, we can't have Big Poppy, or you can't have A Rod as a. A cleanup hitter. We can't call him that. That would offend somebody else in the lineup who doesn't have the uh, power statistics. That's the mentality. <laughs> Some soldiers say they have experienced a no-patch rule before, both overseas and stateside. Christopher Parker said when he switched over from cavalry scout to infantry, all prior service and activity duty soldiers were ordered by the CSM to remove their combat patches. Oh, my God. What the fuck? What is going on? Girl, I'm gonna fucking smash his fucking face in. Exactly. Mm. He said, at the end of uh, the course at graduation, I then realized that I had more deployments and awards than my drill sergeants. Maybe that was the point. I don't know, but I feel by removing my patches, somewhat dishonored my friends who had passed on during my deployments, Park said. Exactly. Unbelievable. I, I, I can't believe it today. we're to this point. I, I, I fucking can't believe it. I can't believe it. Get rid of Alexander Hamilton. <laughs> Crazy. You fucking believe this shit? Get rid of the old white guys that helped founded this nation and uh, take them off the money. Take your fucking patches off your uniform. Don't say these words. Let these uh, illegals in and give them college tuition. Um, yeah, that's a fundamental. This is what, as Obama said, this is what change looks like. What the hell's going on out here? Exactly. What the hell's going on out here? This is how I feel about it. Kaka poo poo, poo poo, pee pee. Exactly. <laughs> um, yeah. Anyways. What the hell else? Yeah, I went into the stand last weekend. That's the other club. I haven't been at the con. I'm at the cellar tonight, but uh, at the stand, I'm working on uh, working on that new hour, shaping it up nicely. You got to realize uh, the last hour came out in January, but I but I had already done that. Material was always you know a couple of years old to up to the night that you record it, and I had already started my new hour way before I recorded, uh, so I had a nice head start into this hour. So what I'm saying is, there's going to be another album coming. I don't know when. Hopefully you shoot it in the winter, maybe. And um, so, in the meantime, it's what comics do that live around. We go into the city, or if you're already in the city, bounce around to the clubs and uh, work on shit. Working on a uh, <laughs> working on a funeral bit about going to funerals and wakes. And, uh, well, I'll, I'll play it for you. I actually recorded it at the stand, and uh, there's a little, if I can find it here, there's a little funeral chunk I'm working on. I, I prefer, personally prefer wakes over funerals, but uh, here, here we go. Uh, you go to a wake, you do what I do, you kneel down next to the casket, you pretend you're saying a prayer, but you're really browbeating the fucking corpse. <laughs> Sometimes I stay up there too long. Even my grandmother's friend, I hear my father behind me, hey, what are you looking for, signs of foul play? I'm like, he's 106. 
And I'm like, Mom, just looking at the makeup job. Jesus Christ, she's an 88-year-old Italian woman. She looks like Lady Gaga. <laughs> Apparently, Liberace's hairdresser is working with the funeral home. Fucking bad look for my grandmother. I mean, don't get me wrong. She was, you know, kind of looked like Vince Lombardi when she was crying. But, uh, but I loved it. You're staring, staring at the fucking dead body. Here's what I, something was bothering me about uh, going to Wakes. And he, I figured it out. My buddy's father died. Don't get all sad. He's kind of a dick, but I went anyways. <laughs> But here's what bugged me, you know? I, I, I know the guy my whole life. I never saw him in anything but like a fucking wife beater and shorts. And now he's laid out in like a $1,400 Italian suit, $800 shoes. Isn't that kind of a waste? Beautiful suit? It's going right into a hole to rot? Does that bother anybody? Yeah. How about the poor guy digging a hole? You know, they get Guatemalan immigrant making three bucks an hour. You know what happens when the family leaves the cemetery, right? The Guatemalan rips the suit off the guy, brings the casket home, makes a go kart for his ten kids. The next day, you look out, your neighbor's gardener is you know, cutting roses, wearing a Hugo Boss suit, wearing a Miley shoes. Anything, honey? Hello? Close. Even the casket is a waste. You see how beautiful, what a beautiful, what a beautiful piece of furniture a casket is, right? You have a look at a casket up close. Talk to a about black girl here. People have hypertension. You know the casket. <laughs> it's, it's a black a woman up front. Coats of shellac on it. It's like a sailboat, silk interior. Oh, that's going right in the fucking hole. Oh, shh! Don't discuss it. Don't find me. The lady's talking about the jokes. The one lady that I like in the audience is yelling at her. But all those nice clothes go right. You can't. It's a waste. You guys look at a cemetery. You see what? You see dead people. I see a men's warehouse. <laughs> Billy needs a suit for the prom. Let me, let me, let me get my shovel. I'll be back in 20 minutes. See Billy at the prom slow dancing. He's got maggots on his collar. <laughs> Dust all over us. <laughs> Your cologne smell like formaldehyde. <laughs> I uh, I had to make out a living will recently. I'm at that fucking age. My wife takes care of this. I know. How fucking creepy is that? I'm having a discussion about when I'm gonna die soon. My wife better hope that I fucking die first. Because she handles all the money and the paperwork. And you fucking, if, <laughs> if she goes first, that body is not going to see a hole for, I don't know, six, eight months. I'll be trying to figure out the applications. And she'll be standing in the fucking, she'll be in my garage behind a canoe with a top over her, rotting like a summer squash. <laughs> Where's your wife? I don't know. I can't figure out this fucking the application on the app on my computer. Fucking, I, I rebooted it and she's got a summer squash growing out of her neck. I can't figure it out. She fucking I just pick her, picture her lean, stiff as a board. Fucking birds and squirrels pecking on her. I'm, I'm fucking trying to use her computer. What's the password, you bitch? Fucking, How sad is that, that I, uh, I've actually had that discussion. We meet with, uh, you know, I don't even know what you call the guy. Uh, lawyer Nick? Whatever. The, uh, you know, <laughs> financial advisor sent it to some guy to do a living will. That's when, you know, the living will deal is if, let's say I get in a car accident, I'm in a coma. She has power of attorney. She can decide what to do with me, make all the decisions and vice versa. And I am not mature enough to do that. That's why I find that bit kind of funny. I am the worst as far as paperwork and money and uh, God. That's my worst fear, man. She falls off that horse. Some days I hope. Now, look, I'm kidding about that. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's my worst fear, man. <laughs> that I uh, Just me, my p computer skills and my basic immaturity. She'll be leaning behind a canoe in that uh, against the snowblower in the garage, and that'll be that. That's about it. Got uh, Uncle Vinny's on Saturday night in Point Pleasant. 
I think the crowds are pretty good because uh, summertime. You know, I do those. I go down there in the winter, too. I can't remember if everybody's at the beach or they actually, because everybody's down there in their summer homes, they actually come to the show. Can you imagine I've been playing the place forever and I can't remember what's better, a winter night there or a uh, summer night. But if you're in the area, and don't forget, especially don't forget, I want you guys to come. If you're in the Tri-State area, come to Ridgefield Playhouse on July 18th. Seriously, it's uh, it's just a great venue with beautiful old theater. And I'll pollute it with my uh, my brand of horse shit. It's a nice uh, suburban town. <laughs> but uh, good luck to Hillary, and I hope she's a nominee. Don't you? Sure you do. <laughs> Hillary! <clears throat> her in a trailer getting ready to speak. To lay out more of her lies and horse shit. Hillary, uh, yeah, it's... Banging on the door. Hi, Hillary. Fox News. I'd like to talk to you. She won't come out. Come on. We got a few questions for you about the uh, about your server and uh, Hillary. My God, what has she been living on? White bean chili. Yeah. Well, kids, that's about it. Uh, you guys have been great as usual. Uh, love you to death. And. Um, that's all I can think of uh, in the world. Oh, real quick. Oh, uh, real quick in sports. Chicago Blackhawks, congratulations, your sons of bitches. Your third one in like five or six years. That is not a dynasty, by the way, but you're getting close. A little too close for comfort. Jordan Spieth, 21 years old. He has won the Masters and the U.S. Open, the first two majors of 2015. One of uh, only six guys to do that. And uh, in the history of golf, and he's like the youngest one since 1923. Imagine the ass this guy's getting. Then again, he's married, but um, <laughs> can you imagine? Uh, Tiger didn't make the cut. He was like 16 over, and just he's not even relevant anymore. Yet you wouldn't know it from watching the, the broadcast. And the, again, in this such a racist country we live in, they still spend half the broadcast talking about him. But uh, he embarrassed himself. And uh, Jordan Spieth and this guy, Dustin Johnson, who was I was kind of pulling for because he's uh, I think he's the guy that had drug problems. Uh, he had to step away from the tour. Kind of. He had, I think, I hope I have the right guy, cocaine and alcohol problems, which makes you kind of like the guy. But uh, he had a chance on the final hole to get an eagle. Was it an eagle? I might even be blowing this. I know that Spieth on 17 double bogeyed. So that left just, yeah, uh, that left uh, Dustin Johnson, I think, two strokes. And he had a chance for an eagle, and he missed it. He three-putted. So he missed it, and then he had, a sh- like, a, I don't know, a couple feet coming back, two, three feet coming back to tie it, and they would have went into an overtime. I know you guys are fascinated by golf talk on a podcast, but it would've, they would have had a playoff on, on today, 18-hole playoff, but he missed that one too. And uh, my brother, who's an avid golf fan and golfer, said, yeah, he's been, he's in, Dustin Johnson's a known of a bit of a choker. And uh, he might have to hit the sauce again if you want to make those shots. I know that's a horrible thing to say, but uh, I was kind of pulling for him. And, um, and uh, yeah, they were on some course up by Seattle, and the, the, the players hated it because there's some type of grass they used that makes it very bumpy. It wasn't like a wasn't like a carpet like you see at most U.S. Opens and most golf courses with majors of play. You know, you got that silky greens. These were look like it looked like my uh, my my front yard in August, kind of dried up like a eczema patch, and the balls were weren't exactly rolling true. Players get a little whiny in golf. You know, it's like, fuck you, just fucking hit it. <laughs> Wait till they go to the uh, British Open, which is next. It ain't much better. But anyways, uh, Jordan Spieth, that's pretty amazing. 21 years old, and he's won the Masters. In the, those are the two biggest ones in golf. And uh, Golden State Warriors, congratulations. First time in 140 years they have a title. Actually, it's the fifth in their history. Which isn't that bad, but they hadn't won one in like 40 years, I think. Something like that. So that's it, kids. Uh, I will talk to you real soon. Take care of yourselves and wash your filthy faces.